Hello, uh, I'm Mr. Burton, and today we are going to be looking at market failure. This is an Edexcel Unit 1 topic. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be working on externalities. Uh, but just as a quick recap, we have market failure, which is the Unit 1 topic. Remember, there's two different types of market failure. We have complete market failure, and this is when there is no products or services that are produced at all in the market. But we're going to be focusing on partial market failure, and that is what externalities come under. So remember that partial market failure is when there's either too little or too many goods or services produced in the market. So remember there are a number of different types of partial market failure. There is under provision of public goods, there's labour immobility, there's unstable commodity markets, and you can find a video for that if you click here. And what we're looking at today is externalities. So we'll circle that. So we've got market failure, partial market failure is one type of market failure. And we're looking at one of those, which is externalities. So we have both positive externalities and negative externalities. And we're going to focus on both of those today. And the first one we're going to be focusing on is positive externalities. So the first one we're going to be looking at is positive externalities. Now positive externalities uh, are usually derived uh, from merit goods. Now these are goods or services that benefit third parties from your private transaction. For example, uh, a good one to use would be going to the gym. So I would pay £10, let's say, to go to the gym, and that would benefit me privately. However, this would also benefit society, because me going to the gym, I might get fitter, therefore I might be more productive at work. Uh, I might also uh, be healthier, therefore there'd be less cost to the NHS. And so all these reasons mean that uh, going to the gym, for example, is a merit good, and it causes positive externalities, so external benefits to society. We can show this using a positive externalities graph. This looks like any other supply and demand graph to begin with. So we start with price on the y-axis and we start with quantity on the x-axis. The first thing we need to do then is draw in the private lines. So the private cost lines and the private benefit lines. So this looks like any other demand line. And we label that M, P, B. That's the private benefit that the consumer gets from going to the gym, if we're using the gym as an example. Now we need to put in the private cost line, which looks like a supply line. So that is the marginal private cost. That's the cost to the firm for producing quantity or for renting the gym and the bills, etc. So now what we need to do then is we've got the private cost and the private benefit. So we're looking at a free market equilibrium point. So now we need to put in the free market point, which is here where they meet in the middle, just like supply and demand. And we go down from there to get the free market quantity that is supplied and consumed. We label that QE. And we go across to the price axis and we label that PE. So now we have the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity in a free market for the gym. However, as a government, we look at uh, a merit good, such as the gym or education or keeping bees or cycling, anything that will benefit society as a whole, the government will look at that and say, hang on a minute, we need to show the actual benefits to everybody else from you going to the gym. Therefore, we need to draw a social benefit line. So we draw a line in here, which is parallel to the benefits, the private benefits. And we label that marginal social benefit. And we don't need to worry about why that line is exactly there. However, we know that the line would shift to the right because as a merit good, we can assume that the government would want us to consume and produce more. So we can there therefore see that if we push it up to the right, there'd be more quantity which is consumed. So we know that the MSB line needs to be pushed to the right. 
Now, with going to the gym, with merit goods as a whole, we assume there's also no cost to society. There is no external cost for going to the gym. Me going to the gym, for example, isn't going to uh, affect society negatively. Uh, me cycling also would not affect society negatively. So now we have a social benefit line and a private benefit line. So the next thing we need to do is, as a government then, we've shown the social benefit line, we need to now label the socially optimum point. Now remember that's a key term in um, the unit one, socially optimum point, and that is where the marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost. So we know that to be here, because the social cost line is the same as the private cost line here, but the social benefit line we've added in, and therefore the new quantity that the government would hope we would consume at would be here. We'll label that QS, socially optimum point. And the price would be up here. Now the price is higher, that's sometimes a bit confusing. Why is the price higher? The price is higher in this aspect because as consumers and as society, we should be paying more to go to the gym. We should, we should think actually the gym is worth that amount. So we should be willing to pay that amount to go to the gym. And actually if the government wanted us to go to, to the gym or to cycle more, then, that, then what they'd do is they'd use a subsidy to, to sort this problem out. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, so where have we gone from then? We've gone from the free market point, which is here, where MPB equals MPC. We add in a social benefit line here, and we recognise the socially optimum point of production and consumption. So if all was well and we did what was good for society, we took in all the external benefits of going to the gym or cycling or education, we would consume and produce at this point here. However, we're not producing consuming at that point here. Remember that at the moment we added this line in, but that's where we want to be. We are still consuming and producing at the free market point, PEQE. So we need to find out then the external benefits. The external benefits, are, remember, are the benefits to everybody else from us consuming privately. Therefore, we need to go from at this quantity level that we're at, we need to draw a line going up to the social benefit line. Now that there, that line, going from the free market point up to the new line, we label that as the external benefit. That is the external benefit line. And that is the amount uh, of external benefits we get, uh, which we are missing out on uh, from only uh, producing and consuming at this quantity level. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to shade in the welfare loss triangle, which is literally and simply going from the external benefit line and shading in that triangle there. Now what we have shown is that from producing and consuming at the free market point and not taking into consideration the external benefits to society, the social benefits, we haven't taken those into consideration, and so we are losing here, we're losing welfare. So this is the welfare loss triangle, excuse my handwriting. And so we need to end up then with this complete graph. And this graph is showing the external benefits for going to the gym, cycling, education, merit goods, and it's showing the welfare loss triangle, what we lose as society for only staying at the free market point and not being at the socially optimum point. And that is the graph we need to use when we are talking about merit goods and positive externalities. Okay, so a way to increase consumption of positive externality goods, so merit goods, uh, like going to the gym, as we've already said, it produces uh, external benefits to society. So a government, therefore, would want to increase the consumption of those goods. So how might they do that? Uh, well, obviously they don't use taxes because that increases the price. So they use subsidies. And subsidies are literally 
giving uh, money to producers uh, to decrease the cost and therefore decrease the price. If we can decrease the price of a good, that means consumers will consume more uh, and the quantity consumed and produced will go up. So more merit goods are being consumed by everybody and that's better for society. So we can use that using, again, a supply and demand graph. And although with taxes and demerit goods, you can still use the MPC, MPB lines, the easier way to analyze subsidies is to stick to using supply and demand graph. So let's start from the, from the beginning using supply and demand. So exactly the same as with the other graph, we have a free market point of production, and that is having price there at PE and quantity here at QE. Now remember, the government wants there to be more quantity in the market, but the free market is not allowing that to happen uh, because it doesn't take into consideration the external benefits. So therefore, one of the, the main ways that the government can increase the consumption and the production is to give money to producers and to shift supply, therefore, to the right. So the government will give money to producers, shift supply outwards. Let's call that S2, that S1. That's the original, that is the new supply. Uh, and let's say then that this is the quantity level as in the old graph, this is the quantity level that the government wants society, QS, to be at. So that's the socially optimum point there, and this is the socially optimum quantity for, for society. So, the subsidy amount, well how can we work that out? How much subsidy does the government give to the producer in order to decrease the price for consumers uh, for there to be more consumed? Well, what we need to do to find the subsidy is to go from the socially optimum point, which is here. I'll draw this in green to make it easier to see. We draw a line from the socially optimum point all the way up to the old supply line. Now, we need to remember that with external benefits, we go from the free market point to the new line. But when we're looking at subsidies or taxes, but in this case subsidies, we go from the new point, the socially optimum point in this sense, and we go back to the old line. So this green line here is the subsidy. And this is the direct subsidy that is given to producers. So subsidy here. And if there was, uh, if this was mathematically drawn and there was numbers on this side, we could actually work out the amount of subsidy that the government gives because we have, we have the prices on this side and the quantity numbers on this side. So we can actually show the exact amount of subsidy the government gives. So what do we do from here then? How can we, we further analyze this? We draw a line from here, from the top of the subsidy, all the way to the price axis. And we'll call this PO. And we draw a line from the bottom of the subsidy, so the new socially optimum point all the way across, and we'll call that P1. Now we can see that at this quantity level, the new quantity level, the socially optimum quantity level, this is the socially optimum point, so therefore the price that consumers pay for the goods is here, P1. So who gets the subsidy then? Well, the consumers used to pay this price, the free market price, PE. Now the consumers pay the socially optimum price. Let's label that PS, as that one is QS. So the consumers therefore get the price decrease. So they get this amount here. We can shade that in, in our exam, and we can show that there's a price decrease from the subsidy, and that is what produce, uh, the consumers, sorry, the consumers get. They don't get given that money, but they get that money effectively because there is a price decrease when they go and buy that good. But there's still a bit left here. So what do we label that as? Well, that means the producers directly get given the rest of that subsidy there. 
So we can show therefore that the consumers, we should label that all the way to the side, the consumers get the bottom half of the subsidy, the price change, so we'll label that consumers, and the producers, the producers get the top half, label that producers. The best way to remember that is drawing the subsidy line from the new socially optimum point back to the old line. And remember, the best way to remember it is not top and bottom, it is the consumers get the price change. That makes sense. The price has gone down, so consumers will get that subsidy there by the decrease in prices, and the producers get the rest. Now that's the only thing you need to remember with this is who gets what and how to draw the subsidy line. And if you draw this graph like this and explain what I've done here, you will be able to show how subsidies can increase the quantity of merit goods. And you can show how government intervention in a market failure uh, with merit goods uh, can increase the quantity and make society better off.